Hi, and welcome to this video about cognitive care kit. You may be watching this to learn more ways that you can provide dementia care for yourself or a family member, a friend, or a person you work with. To make things a little bit easier during the video, I will use the term loved one to refer to all of these groups. The presentation will include a review of dementia, teach you about the dementiability methods, describe what is included in a cognitive care kit, discuss strategies to encourage participation, demonstrate the use of materials within the kits, as well as explain the selection and loan process. Did you know that dementia isn't a disease itself? Individuals who have a brain-based disease like Alzheimer's or have had a brain injury such as a stroke will often experience dementia. So dementia is just a term we use to describe a group of symptoms that are seen when cognitive abilities are impaired. Cognitive abilities that are frequently affected are short and long-term memory, the ability to think clearly, perceptual abilities, showing good judgment, being able to reason, having attention and concentration, as well as language skills. Hopefully, you have some good knowledge already about dementia. If you were wanting more, I would highly recommend contacting the Alzheimer's Resource Centre. Their services are free and they can provide information and education on all sorts of dementia. As memory and thinking abilities change in our loved ones, we can often see behavioural changes. Some people will start to do new behaviours, while others just stop doing anything altogether. Sometimes the causes of these changes in behavior can be loneliness, boredom, lack of success, or excess disability from disuse. If you don't use it, you will lose it. So what can we do to stop these declines? One idea is to use the dementiability methods. This focuses on exposing the person's retained abilities because what we want to do is help each person to be the best they can be in an environment that has been set up for success. Dementiability is a practical solution. The core feature of this method is to encourage participation in meaningful activities. These can include activities of daily living, which include helping around the house or caring for oneself or leisure pursuits. Finally, this leads us into the cognitive care kits. What are they? They are a collection of activities to help support the skills and abilities of people living with dementia. Before we get into the nitty gritty of the kits themselves, here are some key considerations. The first is the kits are not a quick fix or a cure. Success is making sure that you match activities to what the person is able to do and enjoys doing. And remember, these kits are a shared resource or experience first and foremost, and they encourage independence secondly. And finally, with practice of this method, you'll find that nearly everything in your home environment becomes a meaningful activity that you can adjust for your loved one. Let's review the categories of activities that you will find in each of the kits. First, you will find readers. These include stories that are interesting, enjoyable, and accessible for a broad range of people. Second, you will find conversation starters. These resources stimulate memory and help people to engage in conversations. Next, there are games, puzzles, coloring activities, all of these help to retain gross and fine motor skills and they keep the brain stimulated. And finally, you will find workbooks and worksheets. Leading your loved one in activities may be a new skill for you. Let's talk about some strategies for engagement. The first suggestion is using the WOW method, which is from Dementiability, and it's using the letters W O W. The first W is know who the person is from the past and the present. The O is 
Observe what's going on and where are they meeting with success or where are they not? And finally, our last W is using who the person is, what you're observing to select activities and take actions that will get them to positively engage. The second strategy is to remember that you are the starter button and there are some steps you'll need to take. The first one is to set the stage. So ensure that you've got the environment prepared and all of the activities ready. Number two is take the initiative. So you need to show or give demonstration of how to do the task. And then the third one is just to be flexible and follow the lead. They may not be able to do the activity as you intended, but as long as they're participating, that's all that matters. And the final suggestion is praise the process and not the results. Always ask, would you like to do this activity with me? Invite them to participate. Congratulate them on their success throughout. Thank them for participating so that they will try again in the future and any level of engagement is encouraged. Now it's time to learn more about each category and see footage of actual activity use. The readers have large font, are only printed on one side of the page and have cues as to when you should be turning the page. Try reading together and taking turns while you're reading aloud. It's really encouraged to have family and friends participate and always be prepared for conversations that come up from the topic areas. Would you like to read a book with me? Good. So we're gonna read Peach Jam. And so what we'll do is I can read a page, and then you can read a page. Yeah? Would you like me to start? This is a story about making peach jam with my grandmother. Turn the page. Page two. Thank you, Della. You did a good job reading with me. Did you enjoy that? Oh, sure. Good. Would you like to do that again sometime? Yeah. Good. My uncle Norman, who lived with my grandparents, would go to pick Dad up from the train station. I always went with him. We would ride in his shiny red convertible with the top down. I loved the way my long hair would blow in the wind. I would turn up the volume on the car radio and Uncle Norman and I would sing along to the tunes. I would try to dance while sitting in the front seat. My favorite song in the summer of 1970 was In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry. It seemed like that sound song played on the radio every time we drove to the train station. Do you like to sing? <laughs> I love the conversation starters are either books or cards that have questions on them. Be sure to select topics that are interesting and ask questions of your loved one. Make the materials accessible so that everyone uses them when they come over. Put them on the coffee table, on the counter. And encourage your loved one to share stories and lead the conversations. Be prepared to follow them. Hello, Jean. How are you today? Hi, thank you. Yeah, great. Would you like to have a visit? Okay. I have some interesting questions we can okay. talk about. All right. Okay. So I've got this book called Let's Chat. Alright. So these are questions about jobs you've done. Uh -huh. If you could go to back to school now, what would you want to study? 
nursing again. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about nursing? I was a practical nurse at the old hospital. Okay. Yeah. So you you worked in the healthcare system for a very long time. Yes, I did. What was your favorite thing about it? The babies. Okay. Looking after the babies, the newborns. Wow. So you probably saw a lot of the babies born. Yeah. They're adults yes. now. But yes. <laughs> Changing the topic a little bit. Um, if you could learn to play an instrument, would you learn piano, guitar, or the drums? I took piano lessons, so I got to grade 8 in piano. Wow. Well, you're very musical then. Yes. Great. And is that something you would you would do over again? You'd pick the oh, piano? Yeah. I used to come to the Pines and play. Yeah. Did you ever go to a barn dance? Yeah. Yeah. At Rose Lake, we had dances. Okay. And did you do that at the community hall? Yeah. Excellent. Cool. Yeah, we did. I bet they had some live music. Yeah, we that's did. Awesome. Okay, well that's a lot of, that's pretty cool. It's okay. kind of fun, it's fun doing that. I like doing this. Yeah. You learn a lot about people and what they've done. Uh -huh. Do you like telling stories about like growing up and things yeah, you've done? Oh yeah. Should we do it, we should do this again sometime. Okay. Yeah, well it's good, awesome, thank okay. you. <laughs> Ensure that you are familiar with the games and the puzzles before you present them to your loved one. Having the environment prepared is so important, as is showing interest in their work and how they're participating. Yeah, that works. Let's try, let's try this one. Did you, yeah. Does that look good? Okay. Look at you. So, this one's going to be stacked on top of each other. Practice, hey? Eh? So, I'm going to put about a bunch more out. So, do your best matching colors to make that shape. So, which one is on the bottom? There's another one. Which one? Which of this shape? Which one's on the bottom? Oh. Hmm? I'll move this out of the way. So if you want, you can set it up here. Yeah. And then we'll use this as our picture to follow. Okay. What's the next color we need? Would you like to count? Yeah, yellow. Which okay, which yellow one should we try? See if it's the right size. So we have choices for yellow. So we've got yeah, turn it around. Um, a big, a medium, and small. Which there one do you go. think would be the right like, one? Like a, like a, got it? Contain them? There you go. I think you're on something with that one. <laughs> so would you like to try putting the yellow one, the medium yellow, just right there? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Ooh, excellent. Okay. okay. We'll pop it into this hand. Give it a pinch. And where would that fit on There you go. There you go. Good job. There you go. Good, good job, Millie. Excellent. That's quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> um, yep. what do we have? Roll it again and see. One, 
Let's see if we can get all those numbers. Okay. Perfect. That's true. You only need one for a line. Okay? All right. Awesome. That was a good warm up one. <laughs> We're going to try some different ones. Maybe if you uncross your legs there. <laughs> I think your toes are getting in the way. <laughs> All right, try again. There you go. Good job. Yeah, yeah it's on there. You got 10 points. Yeah. The workbooks and worksheets are graded from easy to more difficult. Be sure to provide at a level that your loved one will be successful. Working in partners is also helpful as you can increase or decrease the support as needed. Would you like to help me with the spelling here? We'll pick the correct spelling. So we've got cleaning or cleaning, which is the correct spelling? Yeah, so we'll circle that one. So this sorting or sorting? these two. Let's cover. I'll cover the other ones so that. Oh, there we go. Point to the one you think. Yeah, yeah, good job. S O R T I N G. Yeah, I think that one's right. Good job. You make a good spelling team. Well done. You're a good speller, Della. Now that you understand what cognitive care kits are, I'm hoping that your next question will be, where do I find them? So that you can start to use the kits with your loved one. At the library, you can search cognitive care kits on the reference computers, or you can request assistance from our staff. They will be happy to help. There are a number of kits to choose from. You are probably wondering which one you should pick. Just consider this. The activity kits are organized in three general ability areas. Early, for persons who are quite independent. Mid, individuals need more frequent assistance. And sensory, where constant support is required. But remember, most activities can be modified so everyone is successful, no matter what. Once you have selected a kit, you will need to loan it out. The kits are part of the library inventory and are loaned the same way as any other resource. In this case, request sign out assistance from our staff at the circulation desk. Remember, the length of the loan is three weeks and then it will need to be returned. That concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, please do ask our staff. They would be happy to answer them for you. I would like to acknowledge the Burlington and Halton Hills Public Libraries for sharing their resources, as well as the residents and staff of the Pines Care Home for their participation. Finally, thank you for watching this video. Your interest in learning how to use the cognitive care kits will enhance the life of your loved one. This project has been a collaborative effort involving the Prince George Public Library, Northern Health, Alzheimer's Society of British Columbia, and Dementia Ability.